I just built this soil kiln behind me and it cost me this much. But if you were to build it, it might cost you this much. Welcome back everyone to part five of the Canadian Solar Kiln Build Series. I'm your host Johnny with Heart to Home Woodworking. And in this week's video, we're gonna be covering a few different topics, including a bird's eye view of the cost to build a kiln just like this one. We're going to talk about the theory behind the design of a solar kiln as well as what I like about my design, what I would do differently, and ultimately what I recommend to you. Finally, we're gonna wrap up the video by addressing some of the questions that have come from you guys. Let's go. Okay, before we get into the cost of everything, I wanna point out that I have a full PDF breakdown of the cost of materials below in the description. So be sure to check that out if you guys want all the information. I have spent many hours researching, comparing prices, and calculating and crunching through the numbers to make sure you guys are getting the most accurate information available, okay? Please keep in mind that the prices listed are relative to my area only. It is possible that you could source your materials for even cheaper or even more expensive than what I have actually shown. First up, we have the base. Note that I built the platform on skids. This will allow me to reposition the kiln in the future if I need to. Other things to keep in mind are your local building regulations. For example, if I were to build this kiln any bigger or pour it on a concrete foundation or footing, I would have had to get a building permit for this, which would have increased my building costs. The base measures eight feet deep by 12 feet wide and uses two by six rough cut lumber spaced on 16 inch centers. To support the rigid insulation, I ripped one by fours in half and fastened the strips on either sides of the joists. Once insulated, I added a layer of vapor barrier and then topped everything off with some 3 8 inch plywood. I want to stress that I took the cheap route here and I'd highly recommend that if you can afford it to use 3 quarter inch plywood as it'll be a much stronger and stable base. Luckily in my situation, I can always just add another layer of 3 8 inch plywood and I'm good to go. All in all, I spent just over $400 on the base material. But if you were to source everything from your local home center, you could be spending closer to around $600. And again, I saved some money because I have free access to lumber with my dad's mill. Next up, we have the framing, which is two by fours spaced on 16 inch centers. I also used a two by six along here to create a bit of an overhang, which did work quite well. One mistake I made was not adding enough blocking, especially on the south side here. What I really should have done was add a row of blocking here and here in order to properly fasten the siding to it. All in all, I spent around $650 on the framing, but if you were to source everything from your local home center, you could be spending closer to $1,200. Next up, we have the roofing. And for the south slope, we went with a high quality polycarbonate panel, which is expected to last a lot longer than your typical panels used in greenhouse applications. I provided an initial review and installation of the panels here, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. Please note that I'm only using a single layer for my south slope. The best of kilns will utilize a, an air gap between two panels, or you can actually get panels built in with a built-in air gap. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any of those panels in my area, so this was really the best option for me. For the north roof, I went with 29 gauge metal roofing, which I picked up from Discount Direct Metals. Once again, they are a family owned business in my area and I absolutely love working with them every time. All in all, I paid about $550 for the roofing where you could expect to pay around 700 for the roofing. I just had stuff lying around so it saved me a bit of money. Next up, we have the siding, which I chose to go with board and batten. It cost me nothing, but if you were to do it and you didn't have access to free lumber, it cost you roughly $1,400. So while it was the best option for me, it may not be the best option for you. There are definitely cheaper alternatives out there for you. It's just a matter of what level of protection you want and the look that you're after. Finally, we have the solar power setup, which consists of a 200 watt, 12 volt panel connected to the two Amtrak solar fans. To run power to the fans, we ran 16 gauge wire and tied into the existing connections. After much discussion with highly educated people and contacting Amtrak directly to discuss my specific needs, we landed on a 200 watt panel. Please note that while you could run the two fans off of a single 100 watt panel, you won't get max efficiency with that panel. You will need to run a 200 watt panel. 
And I can tell you in the week so far, the fans are working great. My only complaint is that the whole solar kiln is not in an ideal location as I've got a big tree right where the sun starts to rise. All in all, I spent just under $600 for the solar power setup, which is quite comparable now to what you guys would spend. Adding everything up to what you guys saw in the very beginning of the video, I spent $2,200, where you guys would spend closer to $4,500. Considering a wood mill just like my dad's costs around $4,000, if you have access to a property full of trees, you will quite literally pay off that mill within the first year of ownership. It is worth it, worth every penny. So I know you're gonna ask, but Johnny, that's great and everything, but how the heck does a solar kiln work? Well, come with me and I'll explain. So remember, we painted the entire interior black. That allows the sun's energy to collect and absorb onto the surface. I've got a black tarp here and I'm gonna talk about that, but I'll just quickly mention it sucks, don't use a tarp, okay? I'll talk more about it, but. Okay, so anyways, the sun's energy is absorbed into the kiln, okay? We have two fans up at the top. Let me see if I can uh, show you guys here. So the sun's energy is collected in here and right now, down in the stack here, I've got my, my temperature sensor right, right in there, okay? It is, it is reading about 31 degrees in here, but at the top, I guarantee you, it's already about 42 degrees Celsius, and it's still early in the day. It's, it's only about 12.30 in the afternoon, okay? You've got a really hot environment. You've got a solar-powered fans circulating the air down, theoretically, through the stack, and it's just... A cycle effect okay the biggest problem I'm having currently with my setup is I went with a black tarp which is great for absorbing the heat it's nice and hot but the biggest problem is is you can see it's shrunk a bit okay so let me try and show you here I'm trying to pull it as tight as I can and I'm about four inches from the wall so it's not it's a lot of airflow is going around what I believe is happening is a lot of airflow is going around the sides and not through the stack. What happens then is you get a big temperature difference. So I've got hot air at the top and I've got warm air on the bottom instead of a nice even temperature going all the way around, okay? So what you want is, I, I'm gonna try switching to like some sort of fabric. I might have to spend some extra money, but definitely don't go with a tarp because it will shrink and you won't get you won't get the, the circulation that you're after. So I will have to switch it up and I will have to give you guys an update in a, in a couple months. I wanna take a minute just to point out a common misconception with uh, the airflow direction of a solar kiln. I'm at the bottom vent here and when you look at the natural convection of heat, heat rises, right? So if I open this bottom vent and I take this lighter, it's gonna start burning inwards okay flames going in doesn't matter where okay air is going in now if i open the top vent here heat is blowing out and i can physically feel the heat blowing out okay a lot of people seem to think that the cold air goes in through the top goes through the fans down through your stack and out the bottom vents that that's actually not the case doesn't matter, even with my fans running at full speed right now, and I will show you. They are running at full speed. You can hear them. Even running at full speed, the, the, the hot air is still coming out the top because of natural convection, right? Hot air rises. I wanna take this opportunity to thank everyone who's helped me with the Solar Kiln Build Series. Honestly, uh, I couldn't have done this without you guys. Starting off with my dad, I love you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, my best friends, Trevor, Nico, Jordan, and Logan, you guys were all so helpful. Brandy, oh yes, yes, for entertaining me all the time and never wanting to stop playing fetch. Hmm? Yes, you never stop. You never ever stop. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to film here. Okay, go on, good girl. Corey, Discount Direct Metals. Thank you again for continuing to deliver amazing products. Brandy, you gotta go, you gotta go, go on. Home Depot, Timmermart in the barrier location, Rona, uh, Recovery Roofing, Richard, 
thank you so much for helping me with this build. Honestly, with the roofing, can't thank you enough for taking the time to address my questions, comments, and concerns. Seriously, buddy, love you. Can't wait to see you again. Now, I really do hate asking people for their subscriptions, but seriously, I spend a lot of time and energy trying to make these videos for you guys. So if you guys got anything from them, or if you, especially from this series, please hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to hit 500 subscribers by September and 1,000 by 2023. Can we do it? Maybe by 2023, sure, but I don't know if we'll hit the 500 mark. Not at this rate. So share it with your friends, share it with your family, spread the word, help me grow. <laughs> so let's talk about what I would do differently. For starters, um, if you're gonna do board and batten, don't do, if you, if you really like the look of the bottom trim, then add more blocking on the bottom row. On your south wall, definitely add a top row of blocking. That way you have a better spot to, to nail to. Um, but on the bottom row, because I put this bottom strip in, I wasn't really thinking when I did that, um, I had to really nail on a downward angle because I didn't have a row of blocking. But honestly, just add more blocking all the way around the entire perimeter and you're good to go. If you can get the double walled panels with the air gap in between, go with that route. For seals, use new seals, okay? What I'm gonna try doing is I'm gonna try getting some expanding foam and I'll try and seal up all the cracks. Hopefully that will stop some air leakage and retain a bit more heat. Don't use a tarp. Tarps are garbage. Um, I'm gonna experiment with a few other things. I've really been trying to figure out what other people are doing and I can't figure it out. So if you have suggestions on what to use, let me know down in the comments. I'd really love to hear from you. Uh, solar panel bracket. It's, it's an old one that was for my dad's panel that was like a 35 watt panel. This is obviously a lot bigger of a panel. So we had to put this two x four brace in, but definitely by the winter time, I will have to upgrade it. I'll probably get him to weld me up something. <laughs> Dad, if you're watching this, I got some work for you. <laughs> Anyways, yes, yeah, so I, I, need to, I need to change that bracket before winter. Otherwise this will all come down and I will be out a few hundred bucks. Early, earlier on in the series, I suggested maybe making that an eight foot wall. Uh, now, Seeing that natural convection is always gonna win, I don't know if it's that big of a deal. Uh, yeah. There'll probably be less waste, honestly, if you go with an eight foot wall, but I don't know. Do what you want. Let's move on to some of the questions that you guys have and we'll get those answered. I know some of you are wondering about using fresh milled lumber for the siding and whether there's, there's going to be any shrinkage for that. There is. You can expect shrinkage for sure. But in my experience with all the other outbuildings, it's very minimal because we're using such thin boards to begin with. So on the bottom, it's been quite a few weeks. I'd say that I'd say these boards are reaching equilibrium as we speak. Uh, and they've only shrunk maybe an eighth on the bottom overall. And because I cut them extra wide and I butted the boards up to begin with, you don't see anything behind it at all. Um, they're still very solid, secure. Again, if you have access to, to green lumber, use it. I would, I would try and avoid using green lumber for the framing or anything for the interior because it's really going to shrink because it's inside the kiln, but on the outside, it's always going to be at equilibrium with the surrounding uh, environment. So it won't shrink a lot. I also received a question regarding the angle of your solar panel and where to, where to put that. Easiest answer I can give you is match it with the slope of your kiln itself. There's a lot of science and a lot of research into what angle, which direction uh, you should face your solar panels, but that all has to do with maximizing power generation, say for running appliances in your home. But because we're just running solar power fans, I would just say, put it facing south with the same slope that you have your collector. That's the easiest. If you, if you wanna actually run power to your house, then hire a contractor to do it properly for you. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you for this week's video. And that pretty much wraps up this series. 
I will probably do a, an update probably towards the end of the season, if not a year from now, a one year review on this baby. But if you guys have any questions or if I, if I start getting lots of questions from you guys about the build, then of course I'll make another video, but I have no plans right now unless you guys want something. So again, if you guys got anything from this video, hit that subscribe button, please. Give it a, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. I wanna try a new thing at the end of every video now, and that is, uh, let me know down in the comments below one thing that you've learned from the video. I mean, it could be anything, literally, like, anything. Like, maybe I've got a smudge on my shorts that you just noticed, I, I, I don't know. Bye. Whoop, 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 whoop. Doodle, 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 doodle. Boop, 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 boop.